What's up YouTube? This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another keto conversation. So let's get started. All right, so we're back at you another week. Uh, hopefully you're having a great week. We're gonna to try to keep this keto conversation short, but uh, we've said that before and they end up being <laughs> 20 plus minutes. So anyway, Sarah sent me an article from the good folks at popsugar.com. If they can be relied upon yeah, for accurate Yeah, so news. anyway, I was a little bit, <laughs> anyway, but I don't know. You might be a subscriber to popsugar.com. I don't know, I'm not. Uh, it's called Six Dangers of the Keto Diet According to Experts. And this is from se September 26th of this year. Of 2019. So it's so, a few days old. So first thing I guess I wanted to say, so Sarah found this. Actually, my sister found it and sent it to me as a possible keto conversation topic. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So, topic. so, you know, we have people scouring the World Wide Web looking for Keto conversation topics. Topics for us. <laughs> so... <laughs> He, this was sent to us and uh, one of the things now I saw something from Dr. Berg this week I haven't been able to verify about keto being the number one diet now um, maybe as we're, as we're talking I can find that I'm not sure what article that came from or where that information came from and because um, I think last year or even earlier this year keto wasn't we number. were like last on the list. Yeah, and, and so yeah. now suddenly world keto news is and whatever reports the number one diet. And and again, I don't know where that came from. I know it was in reference. It was part of an article where he was talking about there's some kind of ranking thing. Oh, I think it was Facebook or something, some website where they were ranking keto sites, and you know, Dr. Berg's site was I think was number one, and then Thomas DeLauer and maybe keto connect but anyway that's neither here nor there but but uh, the popularity of this lifestyle yes, is undeniable that's that's sure. where i was going keto is hot the, it's popular uh, there's hardly anyone who hasn't heard of it let's just put it yeah, that way so whether they've tried it or their friends have tried it right. or whatever it's you know you've heard of it more yeah, than likely yeah you've been living so, under, under a rock if yeah. you've never heard of the keto i mean movie diet. stars are doing it and right. you know sports stars and etc so i mean it's out there right it's and it's out. and it's i think it's actually starting to become kind of well i think it's already become mainstream right but i think i know yesterday i was wearing a shirt i think it says something like bacon no i think it was like what is it? Carbs, and then it has a less sign. Oh yeah, and then carbs. Fat, less. The greater than, you know. So the the greater than part was to the to the fats, and the less than part of the sign was to the carbs, yeah. and then it was like hashtag keto or something. I think yeah, so. I think it, you made it a little bit yeah. more complicated than it was. But anyway, yeah, I was wearing that shirt, and I got a lot of comments about it. So people understood what it meant, what it meant. that you were lowering your carbs yes. and upping your fat yes. and that was hashtag. And so I was just walking around in Walmart and people were like, hey, like that shirt and blah, so it's just people I don't even know. So keto is a thing. It's a real thing. People are out there well, doing it. Well, anytime that. they're making articles about it, why you should or should not do it, yeah. it's a thing. So now when I started, you know, for some of y'all who don't know, you know, we have, sure we have our YouTube channel but we also have a blog uh, where we primarily just have our recipes we may have a couple other things out there but it's primarily recipe our recipes and um one of the things i took i was taking a course from somebody uh, a blog guru and one of the things he was advising people to do uh years ago was if you want to get traffic to your blog talk about the keto diet so you could have a blog about cats. So this was someone who was this, not practicing right, a ketogenic diet. Right. And he actually, said, talk about and actually, it. I think he was practicing keto at some other point in his career. But from a blog traffic standpoint, that's because that's what the context because of the, of the conversation was. It was like, hey, if you want to get traffic to your blog, I don't care if you cut if your thing is about quilting, about cats. Because <laughs> it's a hot topic. It's right a now. hot topic, keto. You put something there about keto. And so, again, keto is still hot. And people who... And so when we and see yet, articles... And yeah. yet, despite its popularity, despite its hotness, there is still a lot 
of misinformation out there. Yeah. And that is basically what we're going to be talking yeah. about today. But when, and, but when I see this article, this title, Six Dangers of the Keto Diet According to Experts. They have not stated in the article who the experts are are yeah well, i'm assuming they, it's I think they nutritionists a few nutritionists. of some kind but they're not necessarily ketogenic experts. yeah they i think they're they reference a few but but the whole point is i guess when i when you sent me this link to this article i looked at it like okay here's somebody else trying to so i need readers what's good thing to write about i'll write about keto and i'll be i'll go the opposite way and i'll say that it's dangerous and this is the reason or why possible potential yes. danger and so yes. so again we're just we're just going through to this, be reading kind of and trying it. to help you maybe debunk some right of this because you may still run into people who you talk to who will still think this because although we you know in our world keto is a big thing it's our lifestyle and so on so on and so forth there's still people who don't do keto there's still people who have a lot of misinformation about keto and these types of articles, they will read it and they'll and say, see, that's, it. that's that's what I meant. I right. knew that was wrong. So anyway, let's get into it and see if we can keep this video under 25 minutes. Okay. All right. So, so the first danger is increased cholesterol levels. Yes. So this is definitely a hot topic in this lifestyle. Yes. Because the ketogenic diet requires that most of your calories come from fat. And so uh, a lot of people are under the misconception that eating a high fat diet then can increase your cholesterol and level. fat's been demonized in our right. diet for years. Right. It's been demonized. Saturated right. fat has been Sat demonized, yes, period. Has. That's yes. why we have things like margarine and, yes. you know, oils that don't come from natural sources versus, you know, back when, you know, this country first started, it was lard and butter and, you know, tallow and all those other right. things. But so now saturated fat has been demonized. It's getting a little better than it once was, but still people consider, you know, this lifestyle to bring on high cholesterol. I think the greatest rebuttal for this particular topic is people who are actually experts in the way the ketogenic diet can affect your cholesterol levels and who I automatically think of as Dave Feldman. Dave Feldman, okay. Yes. I do too. I think he is well. the cholesterol guy and yeah. he is constantly and consistently doing documented studies both on himself and his associates and so he has pages and pages of data about cholesterol cholesterol levels and not just on the ketogenic diet but he's also practiced some other diets for specific time periods like you know calorie restriction low fat just to see what would happen to right. his cholesterol levels right. so he has all kinds of videos on youtube we're going to link to his channel which is cholesterol code Dot com and he has everything that you would need to know about taking a cholesterol test as as a ketogenic lifestyle proponent and he also has some very pertinent information on how you can ace your cholesterol tests if you're concerned about that and you know that you're going to be having a physical and you know that is that is going to be an is issue for you he has ways for you to get around these readings that somehow inflame your doctors so it's very very good website very accurate very very pertinent to this particular topic dave Feldman's also got a youtube channel yes he does so if you don't if you don't want to read as much there is a youtube channel a lot of great interviews that he has done he's at almost um, every low carb conference around the world he's, yes he's always invited because this is a hot topic, so they're yes. not wrong in putting this in their article because this seems to be a major topic for discussion, especially amongst physicians, yes. you know, because they're still under the misconception that cholesterol is the be-all, end-all for cardiovascular health, and that's just absolutely not so. Right. All right, so <laughs> Dave Feldman, and this is, this is actually what I was looking for. I was looking for a... Um, there's also a channel called High Fat, High Fun. It used to be Keto AD. He did a great video uh, a couple years back, a year ago, about cholesterol, His own experience. statins, mm -hmm. and keto. And he also referenced a lot of good information. He even referenced some of uh, Dave Feldman's information. And I think at some point he may have even interviewed him okay. as well. So I wanted to, I wanted to find well. that. I want to link to his channel. Okay. And as well, so he's got that. That video has got two hundred fifty-one thousand views. So obviously, it's got some good information. So, and it's my experience with high cholesterol, statins, and keto. That's the name of that video. 
All right. Okay. All right, so the next point is what? The Vitamin eye. and mineral deficiencies. All right. So apparently, um, if you're eating the, keto the ketogenic diet, you are going to be missing out on some kind of nutrients. I'm not exactly sure what that would be because if you are practicing the keto lifestyle correctly, there is really no way that you can become deficient in anything because you're supposed to be eating whole food sources, both right. meats, vegetables, uh, full fat dairy products. So you should be getting all of your vitamins and minerals. In fact, more so than people who practice the standard American diet because a lot of times they're eating foods that are fortified yeah. with vitamins and minerals, which your body does not always recognize. If you take a box of pasta and say it's been fortified with iron, you take that in, it's not going to process in your body the way it would if you ate a steak because that is readily available heme iron. It goes directly into your bloodstream and is immediately usable. Your body does not have to change it into some other compound it have to, work on the to then become so. a usable form of iron. Right. So, right. and a lot of times too, there's been a lot of information, especially recently, that the RDA needs to be changed for people who practice a different lifestyle because the RDA requirements that we have right now are based on people who are practicing the standard American diet and not everyone is doing that anymore, even people who are vegans. So everyone who's practicing an alternative lifestyle does not necess necessarily fall into the old parameters of the RDA. And those, those guidelines were based on the standard American right. diet and all the crap that we were eating right. as part of the standard American diet. So yes, there was deficiencies because you're eating all this junk. Right just as part of our standard American diet. And so, yes, you need to get all this stuff supplemented and whatever. Exactly. But again, as Sarah mentioned, if you're doing keto, I mean, you're eating whole foods. You're well, eating... and it's got a picture of oranges, so I can assume that they may be also talking about scurvy, but I have never personally known anyone practicing the ketogenic diet that has gotten scurvy from lack of vitamin C. Yeah, Meat right. is actually a very good source of vitamin C. Right. <laughs> So that is definitely a misconception. Right. All right. So next one was elevated heart rate. Yes. I thought that one was kind of peculiar. Well, you know, your heart rate can become elevated anytime that you are practicing a diet of any kind. Because any diet. Any diet. Okay. Because you're revving up your metabolism and likewise your heart rate can become elevated to, you know, go along with that. So anytime you're in a weight loss situation where your body is actively losing weight that can elevate your heart rate so that's not necessarily uh just a correlation with the ketogenic diet that can be any weight loss program that you undergo because your body is undergoing metabolic changes which then can change uh blood pressure and heart rate temporarily so that's not and they, necessarily and they kind of talk about they try to allude it to that also you may that may be part of being dehydrated. Right, which we are going to talk about a little bit yeah, more on the next well. point. So, yeah. so again, you know, when I read that about the elevated heart rate, I'm like, yeah, I think you're just reaching because you need six points. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. It's kind of the same as the next point anyway with the severe Severe hydration. dehydration. Okay. So, I don't know anyone that would allow themselves to become severely dehydrated. I wouldn't think because you would think that you would become thirsty at some point, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you would I think you would become thirsty. I mean, definitely we've discussed in the past that keeping yourself well hydrated can also offset the negativity from the ketogenic flu when you initially begin Electrolytes the keto diet. Right. Having them like the proper Making sure you're getting enough salt because right. once again going back to the RDA, you know, guidelines for vitamins and minerals we are also eating less salt than we should be on the standard American diet. And so when you, be, when you begin a ketogenic diet, you're going to need to increase your salt level because you're not taking in a lot of fortified or processed foods. And so you might be lacking the sodium that you once had. That you were that taking in from before. Right. Yeah. right, right. So it is true that you are going to need to adjust your electrolyte balance when you start practicing this lifestyle, Right. at least initially. But I think that could be said about any kind of weight loss thing of that course. you may try to do. Is you may of need course. to adjust the amount of water you drink. Especially but... if you're doing any kind of supplementation. Yeah. If you're doing, you know, if you're taking any vitamins or minerals or magnesium or potassium or anything like that, 
you're going to need to be aware of remaining hydrated. But I thought it was interesting in here because it said ketones are a byproduct of, of ketosis. If those build up, a condition called ketoacidosis can result. So they're still throwing out the yeah. ketoacidosis as a scare yeah, tactic. Yeah, ketoacidosis, yep. Ketoacidosis is an extremely rare condition, and it is what happens with dangerously high levels of ketones. Most of us who are practicing this lifestyle are excited if we get, you know, one, maybe two ketone readings per millimolar. Those excite us because that's, wow, that's great. So right. when we're talking about dangerously high levels, we're talking six, seven, eight, I mean, off the chart ketone levels. And most people in relatively decent health, even if you're metabolically challenged, are not going to be able to reach that level of deep ketosis. That is usually something that occurs as a side effect of danger for people with type 1 diabetes. So right. unless you're a type 1 diabetic, ketoacidosis is not generally a problem that you should ever come in contact with. Yeah. But they're still scaring you about it. And it's it. funny because they actually link to another article they have about uh, keep the difference between ketosis and ketoacidosis and it's kind of funny because if you read that article they kind of explain what ketoacidosis is about and they how talk, hard it would be for you to right, they, get they it. They talk about it so it's kind of funny it's like okay <laughs> they this tell is, you to be aware of it but then when they link over to another article yeah it's, it talks about basically how hard it would be to get it yeah and so, so it's kind of like okay, okay. again it feels why, like you why needed, we go there it feels like you needed a point so you <laughs> throw that out because that's again that's a way to sensationalize keto so right. or to sensationalize your article not keto this is your article that you're trying to sensationalize right. So. so the next point is impaired, impaired, excuse me, the next point is impaired functioning of vital organs. So it was ta it's talking basically about your lack of glucose because these nutritional experts are still under the mistaken impression that your body will not produce the amount of glucose it needs regardless of whether you are feeding your body glucose. Right. Just because you do not give your body glucose does not mean that your body does not know how to make it. Your body will begin making ketones instead of glucose if you are keeping your carbs to a certain level. But that does not mean that your body does not know how to do that. I mean, we're living proof. I'm, sure. I'm not going without glucose, even though I'm not putting glucose actively into my body in the form of lots of carbs or lots of sugars. And, and keep... And I guess I want to say this too, because even doing keto, we do eat some carbs. Well, of course. We're just not eating it's as not many eating, carbs as we were eating before. We're, we're not, not eating a lot of refined carbs. Yeah, and we're when not. We talk about carbs, we're talking about nuts. Well, and but some people, vegetables some people are eating, you know, hundreds of thousands of grams of carbs a day. Yeah. And that might sound weird, but if you, if people just so you say you weren't doing keto. And you just, people just track how they normally eat without doing keto. You'd be surprised how many carbs people are eating yes. every day. Yes. I mean, you're talking probably hundreds and hundreds of grams of carb. And you can, some people can. And drinking carbs. Some people can throw soda. that down and just breakfast. At breakfast. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Um, so it's not like if you're doing keto, you're not getting any carbs. <laughs> and, it, and, but like Sarah said, your body knows what it needs. Well, and then and it you will know, produce glucose this, if it needs it. Yeah, and then this point threatens then if you don't have enough glucose, your body's going to turn to your muscle. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why would your body burn muscle if you have excess fat? Yeah. Your body is not dumb. Yeah. That's like I've heard many people talk about if you have a wood pile outside that you have chopped up wood for the winter and instead you break down your sofa and put it in your fire. Right. Right. It's like, no. Your body is not dumb. It knows where to get excess needs from. And that would definitely be from your fat and from ketones, not from your muscle. So right. you don't need to worry about running out of glucose. And another thing, I, I guess I want to keep things in perspective. I remember as I remember that article we read last year about LeBron James practicing keto for a period of time and other prominent athletes practicing keto. Now these are people who they're 
li livelihood is based on their on physical, their athletic ability, their athletic ability, their muscles, their ability to do the things that they do. You think that these people, that's what they do for a living. They're going to be doing something. They're going to run the risk. Right. I can't. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this keto thing, and I'm going to yeah. get super skinny and lose all my muscles. So I can't. You know, I don't think so. So no. it's, it's kind of like. It's when just you, common sense. When you read some of this stuff, it's like, seriously? You're really reaching. But, but the problem is, but the problem is this, and I said this, and I got to be careful when I say this, is a lot of the news we get today is junk. I'm sorry, it's junk. No matter what your source is, you can yeah. get junk news from CNN. You, you a can lot get of the, junk news from your local news. A lot of the stuff we read today, and a lot of the stuff, it's just junk. And if you if you look at it, and, and I don't know where that or how it started. It's just we just read a lot. We live lot. in a sensationalized we live, society. Yeah, we live in a. It's just a lot of junk. Even when you go to, so we had to download Apple News in order to access Pop Sugar. I had taken it off of my devices because, again, every time I look at the news, to me it feels like it's the same stuff all the time. It's the same bad news or something new, but it's still the same sensational right. stuff and when i put this back on my on my device it's like wow there is yeah there's some stuff that maybe it's is pertinent, pertinent. But, but then as i keep going into it this is <laughs> a lot of junk i mean because now we're pulling stuff from everywhere from all over the internet i mean we're just pulling stuff just from dumb, everywhere and this and, and it's just a lot of junk so anyway that's uh that's my commentary on so our last point books. is disordered eating so okay. the experts feel like the ketogenic diet could bring on disordered eating and for their point of view they are saying that people who practice the ketogenic lifestyle are cutting out an entire food group yeah. and maybe to their mind that's what it seems like but we have not given up carbs in our lifestyle, in no, our ketogenic lifestyle. We are still eating carbohydrates, people. Yeah. We still have carbs every day. Yeah, that's true. We do. We're eating vegetables. We're eating small amounts of carbs in dairy, in nuts, some of the other foods and that we that's, enjoy. Yeah, some of the carbs that we're having now, we still have to watch out that we don't have too many exactly. of them. Exactly. You know, so she mentioned not, nuts. We have yeah. to be careful that we don't have too many Almond of them. Almond flour, you know, other yeah. things that have a, a great deal of fiber, but is still a carbohydrate. So carbs are still part of our food group, are still part of our food right. pyramid. Maybe it's not taking up the entire base of our pyramid like it once yes. was when we practiced the standard American diet. But we in no way have cut out carbohydrates entirely from right. our life. Right. And, and again, I've said this before, one of the whole points behind the channel is for us to show you ways where you can have a wide variety of foods on keto and not feel deprived. So this point is written from the perspective that, as you said, we're give, you're, people are giving up everything. Right. People, and that's and even when I talk to people at work, they can't believe, man, how can you go without having that donut? Well, I can go without having that donut because, you know, we just made a mud cake that exactly. tastes just like just, pie. Just like pie. <laughs> so I don't need to have that donut. No. But you don't know that because you, you just don't know it. And so that's the perspective that that's coming from. Well, and realistically, if you have had issues with disordered eating in the past, then following any any form of restrictive lifestyle may not be for you. It may not be suggested for you. Any kind of restricted lifestyle, that's calorie restriction, that's fasting, that's veganism, that's anything. If you have had problems with eating disorders in the past or disordered eating of any kind, then you probably should not be on any kind of restrictive eating program you should, at just, all. You should, just you should be following the advice <laughs> of your psychiatrists and psychologists yeah. and doing what they recommend eating how they recommend for your disorder right so that's not just the ketogenic diet that would be any kind of restrictive diet correct i agree i agree so anyway that is so that that's all the it. points that's it so that was the point six was bad enough. six from pop sugar <laughs> I guess, well, I'm not sure if we can link to this because it, you have to have Apple to get it's to it. Apple News. You might Apple be able News. to find it elsewhere. So I don't know. We'll try to link to it if you want to read it yourself. 
but um, we will link to some of the other stuff that we referenced. Um, the cholesterol information. Yeah, we'll for do sure. that as well. And but again, you know, you got if you're doing keto, you got a hold of something great. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, you're losing weight. But you got a lot. Yeah, got a hold of something that's a lot more powerful than just losing weight. I mean, yes. you're getting your health back, your inflammation, you're you know reducing inflammation. You're having a lot, a lot of health benefits because you're doing the keto lifestyle or the keto diet. Okay, so that is uh, our keto conversation for this week. We'll try to link to this article. Not sure if we can, just because it's through Apple. Uh, Apple, News. Apple News. We have Apple devices, but we may we'll see if we can find it. But we will outside. link to all the cholesterol information that we referenced yeah, as our first will. point. Yeah, we will. We'll do that. And um, a lot of good stuff about cholesterol out there. A lot of a lot of good stuff on YouTube, even about some of these other areas as well. And if I can find some of that as I'm putting this together, I'll link to that as well. We wanted to. Uh, we've done this before in the past, but we wanted to say thank you to some Patreons. Uh, that have decided to support us. We have two uh, new ones. Uh, the latest one is Connie Knight. And we want to say thank, thank you, Connie. Hi, Connie. We appreciate your support. And then Danny T. Uh, we appreciate your support as well. Hi, Danny. And um, thank you for supporting us through Patreon. Um, wow, you know, we're just excited. <laughs> that people even decided to help and do that. We'll be able it, to make some more food It now. actually does help you. Believe it or not, we, you know, we've done all this just on our own. Yeah. We haven't, you know, taken out any loans. We've all nope. the equipment. And we don't we, have sponsors or really yeah, any affiliates. Don't. So everything that we do is done with yeah. our own funds. And so anyway, if you feel like uh, you want to be part of the Patreon supporter group, that's fine. Uh, no pressure on that. We always put links to it in the video description to all of our social media uh, platforms that we're on. Uh, you were telling us that, that you were telling me that the Facebook group is growing. Yes, we got um, so, six members today. Yeah, so we might welcome wanna, everyone. Might want to seek somebody, maybe some volunteers to help manage that, and maybe um, you know help us with that. I don't know, kind of get things rolling i mean we post stuff out there but probably be good you know if you're part of the facebook group or if you make our recipes and you have instagram uh pinterest or whatever and you take pictures of the food put it on put it out there and tag us yeah let us see it and we want to see your creations yeah I and if you get such a big kick out of that and if you modify stuff great go for it uh yeah we want to see let that too know. And you know, if you you know did this instead of that, it's all it, about sharing. And it tastes great. Let us know so that we can, um, yeah, because just because we like to see it. So anyway, that is the keto conversation for this week. If you're new here, this is a segment that we do every Wednesday. Uh, we do new recipes every Sunday, and from time to time we try to do what we eat on keto videos. And so consider subscribing. We'd love to have you as part of our ketogenic family. And we hope that you have a great rest of the week. And we will talk at you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace.